Welcome to lectures 4 and 5 of uh, week 9 as uh, like the previous uh, lectures here also we will be combining you know the lectures uh, 2 lectures into 1 lectures 4 and 5 and uh, you know the focus of this week was really to uh, you know anal analyze in detail even more realistic perforated muffler configurations. So, we did cross flow configurations all right. So, today also we will be we will be dealing with couple of more configurations uh, pertaining to cross flow type and in and um, and in one of the configurations, the second one that I am going to talk about today, we are going to talk about uh, where, where we have three uh, perforated pipes and uh, an outer jacket or outer shell that is housing all these things. So, that will be you know quite realistic and that is used uh, quite a lot in the commercial vehicles. You will probably have a look at some of the only skim, uh, skim through the some of the papers published of late uh, regarding such uh, uh, you know double reversal and uh, Th three perforated muffler configurations and also possibly share with you some images. Now, before we uh, sort of go into that, let us uh, you know get back to our old friend that is basically a, a configuration this. So, today is week, week uh, 9 and uh, lectures, uh, lectures 4 and 5 of this week. Okay this particular configuration a muffler and suppose we have such a kind of a thing and this is expanding into a bigger chamber. So, this can be circular shape or uh, elliptical shape or whatever it is. So, we have a flow mean flow that is coming in from this part. So, now since this is a dead end the flow really has no option, but to kind of navigate through these perforated holes and go through this. So, what is this element called? This is called a cross flow type cross flow expansion. Okay. We make another such configuration which is something like this you know and um, so it kind of goes like this we can sort of draw this thing like this and this can be extended over a certain thing. So, this part is like a kind of a resonator or something like that. So, anyhow the flow you know comes through the annular uh, surface or annular portion and it has no other choice because this is a this guy is a dead end you have like the side end plates of a expansion chamber it has flow has no other choice, but to go inside the the duct the perforated duct through these perforate. So, it, it basically goes in something like here and then it finally leaves the chamber like this. So, what is this configuration called? Very similar this is called a cross flow contraction element cross flow contraction type of element okay. cross flow contraction. So, one question that uh, uh, comes to our mind is that what do we do with this element? How do we use them in practical muffler configuration? So, any so any guesses about that? So, this is not quite this is an online class. So, we have to be cannot be really interactive, but there is something that you should uh, probably have a look. I mean something try to you should try to think about different ways in which this configuration this one let us say 1 and 2 can be combined to form. Uh, to constitute one muffler and we are trying to take advantage of this cross or dissipative losses that happens when occurs when flow has to uh, basically cross through the chamber uh, through the perforated pipe enter the chamber and again enter into this thing. So, one such configuration uh, which is quite popular is called the is basically synthesized something like this. Okay. So, let me just sort of um, draw this thing in a greater detail. So, this will be like this
the flow goes through this thing and it's again forced to expand or again enter back. Okay. And this is the, this guy is called the plug, rigid, rigid plug and these are rigid plates. these ones all right this is called a a plug muffler a plug muffler okay let us sort of um, analyze or uh, label the different uh, geometrical dimensions of the plug so we will we will basically you know call let us uh, start naming this thing so this, we'll call this as lp1 from here to here and this is lp2 these means the length of the perforated section 1 and 2. So, the flow has no choice but to leave the chamber from here and then come back here. So, you know as we can recall from our last lectures, only for the sake of simplicity we assume that the grazing flow is sort of uniform all across here and then it is there is some uniform bias flow across this thing and there is a convective uniform convective flow across this thing and then some uniformity is there everywhere. But, you know if you do a proper computational fluid dynamic analysis of such flows in such bounded media in, in these mufflers, you will realize that you know this grazing flow gradually sort of decreases and becomes almost 0 here and the bias flow tends to increase or uh, more towards this side and then there is convective flow which is also non-uniform across uh, along the space and then the grazing flow inside this duct tends to increase as we go towards the end side. So, we can do a proper CFD analysis, but then there are segmentation approaches also which assume some sort of a linearly decreasing mean flow profile, which is more kind of complicated. But what possibly we can do is that we can assume for the purpose or the sake of this course and not for research purpose, what we can do is that we can just assume things to be uniform. All right. So, mg, the grazing flow is uniform here, it is uniform here and there is a bias flow that is leaving the duct, perforated duct and entering the chamber and it is here leaving the chamber and entering the duct M B. So, this is assumed to be uniform and there are some relations that we derived out of previously we can use them. Now, what about the other things you know, so uh, let me use some other color. So, this is L 1, uh, this guy, uh, this is L 2, this is L 3, this is L 4. Okay. So, the net or the uh, complete length of the chamber will be capital L is equal to L 1 plus L P 1 plus L 2 plus L 3 plus L P 2 plus L 4. And if we consider this as the chamber length D 1, this is D. This is D naught. Okay. And we of course, we sort of neglect uh, the length of this thing, but you can actually consider the thickness of this thing to be T. You can, you might just want to add T thickness here of the plug T P you can say T P. Okay. You will see uh, the transmission loss of such a thing would be better than your simple expansion chamber of course, and it would be sort of somewhere uh, intermediate in uh, compared to the ECTR that is your extended concentric tube resonator, uh, but uh, you know uh, I say intermediate because you know it definitely has more the amount of attenuation that is produces much more compared to an ECTR, uh, but uh, at the same time uh, there are more number of dips the number of troughs and dips will be a bit more. So, uh, let us let us sort of analyze uh, such a configuration. So, this is clearly a two duct configuration you know this one and this one and this one and this one. So, I need not write down the equations again for this thing, you can have a look at the previous uh, slides is the same two duct interacting thing. However, what needs to be done is possibly going back to configuration 1 and 2 and writing down the appropriate uh, boundary conditions for such a thing. Okay. So, uh, writing down the appropriate boundary condition is a must. So, we will see how do we, we will go back to 1 configuration 1 and start uh, sort of writing down the appropriate boundary condition. So, there is one small thing that I need to do. So, you know this is let us call this length um, L B unperforated length this is L A 
and uh, this is L. Okay, so this is L. What we'll do is that we'll write down relevant boundary condition in this figure itself. So let me sort of just rub, put one here. What happens at the section? Let us call this as zero, and this is uh, L. So this is duct one, duct two. Let me write it with red color so that's easy. So you have z two zero is equal to p two by minus u two because the, we have to reverse the sign. So this is minus j rho naught c naught cot into cot of k naught l a and um, z one that is for this duct it is at l. So this is u one. Zero and this is minus j times rho naught c naught cot k naught l b. Okay, so this is what we sort of get. Okay, for uh, this cross flow expansion type of a configuration. So these are the boundary conditions. So one can once you apply that you can relate the variables. You know at this section zero, uh, you know somewhere in the duct here to the variables here. And then once you relate the transfer matrix, you know get the transfer matrix at this point to this point. You know let us you know put this is um, P one at zero is equal to some T matrix T one matrix times P two at L. Okay, and then um, similarly, uh, if we go back to if we go to such a contraction type element, you know let me sort of rub this. So what are the boundary condition? This is again. Your z is equal to zero. Z is equal to L. Um, so what are the boundary conditions? So this is duct uh, one, duct two as usual. So this will be z one is equal to p one zero this thing. And this is your L. Cot K naught L A. Okay. So these are the two boundary condition. And at the end of the day, what we really need to do is that sort of uh, you know relate the transfer matrices. Basically. You know, for a uh, reversal chamber kind of a configuration, what we need to do is that basically get the transfer matrix from you know this point right up to this point. Okay, so we can write things like P two. Uh, what was the previous one? The previous one was okay of this form. Actually, they should be P U one here also and U two stuff here also. So that's understood, but still. So let me call this as T matrix, T two matrix. Okay, and this is P one, U one at L. And and then the intermediate one. Now the thing is that once having obtained the transfer matrix using these boundary conditions, you know from this point really to somewhere here, and from this point really to somewhere here, the intermediate transfer matrix. You know this one also has to be obtained, and um, Right, and these are the anyways the cavities that are formed. So we, this I mean this this particular stuff, this is already taken care of when you apply these boundary conditions. So all we need to do is basically for a plug type of flow, which is very practical implementation of uh, such a thing, we just simply need to uh, multiply. You know, let's say um, P one U one. Of course, there will be rho naught c naught stuff here at zero. So this will be T one matrix. And T intermediate, that is basically nothing but a expansion chamber kind of a stuff will be there, and T two will be there, and uh, P again P but at a different uh, location, say you know uh, L, you can say L. So these boundary conditions T one and T two already incorporate the boundary conditions for the resonator uh, kind of a thing that we sort of see uh, here. And uh, you know the resonators formed uh, somewhere here, and uh, resonators that are formed here, and here in this thing, resonator that is formed here, and uh, in this part, and 
as well as in sort of this part. So we just need to simply multiply the transfer matrix to get the plug muffler analyzed and uh, maybe we can consider some end corrections also. I have not talked about end correction, but there are certain expressions I will just uh, give a glimpse of that later. But what we need to do now is really basically uh, go to the MATLAB code for, uh, for doing our relevant stuff. So for such a muffler, so let us go to the MATLAB code. So let us first analyze uh, in the commented section. So there is one thing that I want to talk about doing a good coding stuff is that you should be knowing whenever you code you should be basically giving a lot of comments like the ones that you see here there are a lot of comments so these this file was written some time back but i can still exactly know what part of the code is doing what just because i have put appropriate comments for example let me very quickly walk you through the code the convective effects of mean flow is ignored is sort of neglected in the big interacting uh, you know uh, two duct interaction matrix they also have ignored the convective effects as you will see you know from these expressions i really haven't done b inverse a is just uh, you know, I am happy to have some sort of a algebraic simplifications at the expense of a small error in the computations or you know rather than you know breaking my head and you know uh, doing that. So the dissipative effects as you know are much more important. It lowers the peak and increases the trough, raises the trough. So those effects are seen. Now let us quickly have a look at the configuration. So D1 and D2, uh, D1 is the diameter of the cylindrical shell containing the perforate assembly that is your, what am I talking about? I am talking about this D naught. Well, the symbols used in the code are sort of different, but still uh, shell means the entire thing that you see, you know, the entire thing here. Okay. So now going over to the MATLAB code, D2 is the diameter of the cylindrical shell, D1 is the diameter of the uniform perforated pipe. So the length is uniform. And forget about this LA, you know, this something, I do not know why I have written this. So save the guy L1 and L4 the lens of the resonators at the ends of the inner tube just adjacent to the perforated section. LP1 and LP2 are the lens of the perforated uh, sections. So they are I mean there's a there's a flexibility of choosing different length. And as usual, DH and TH or T is the thickness of the perforate parameter. So I'll not explain that. So but basically what is important here is L1 and L4 are the lens of the resonators at the inlet and outlet. So let us go back to the thing. So Following the same convention as MATLAB code, L1 is the length of the resonator here, L4 is here, uh, L2 and L3 are the, this guy and this guy are the length of the perforate adjacent to the uh, length of the uh, unperforated section that is a solid pipe or resonator formed due to the pipe itself uh, just adjacent to the, to the perforated section, is not it? So, you know, just have a look at the, uh, the length of the inner tube just adjacent to the perforated section LP and L1 are the lens. So, if you go back LP1, you know L and LP2. So, uh, you know that is the sort of thing that is there in the code and uh, you know I have assumed certain um, well grazing flow I have just set it to 0 here and bias flows of course 0 so stationary medium. So, I have used the LRD's expression which I sort of trust more the modern day expression. So, the, uh, you know T matrix for the perforated section is found out and boundary conditions are applied, it is going to be pretty tedious. So, I am not going to walk you through the entire thing, but this is what we get and then um, this further simplified and some in, some inverse matrix is calculated to get it in this form, you know, it was P2 that is a P, this thing and next now for the coding for the second perforated section after the plug. So, we get this and then we again have to apply, uh, apply boundary conditions and invert the matrix and then this is the intermediate transfer matrix relating the upstream downstream variables and then you simply multiply as I have shown and then you finally sort of put it in the P V form rather than P naught to naught that kind of a form and this function gives the output of a transfer final transfer matrix which is uh, obtained here and then you get your this thing. Okay. What we have the parameters ideally you could have done in the file but uh, what we could do is that this is going to be a little sort of um, tedious. So, I sort of would not do that bear with me for a minute and I make some changes in the code. So, what I have done is that basically I have made some small changes in the code not much instead of just entering these down in the same file whenever we need to do parametric studies we simply need to change these values without having to bug the user. Before I hit run, so inner perforated duct diameter is 40 and I guess I have made a mistake here. <laughs> so, this uh, D2 was 
this d2 cannot be equal to this thing. So, d2 is the diameter of the cylindrical shell by mistake. So, what I am going to do uh, let us say this is about 150 mm and this can be actually a bit more also 50 mm perhaps and L1 and L, L4 length has the same 0 0.2 200 mm perforated section is about only about 100 mm you can make it more you can make it something like 150 mm and the lengths that are formed just adjacent to the perforated pipe in each tube is 100 mm 100 mm each 30 percent porosity you can use a smaller value it is known to cause a little bit numerical instability so there is lot of scope, scope of research also we will talk about that in a bit so I have hit run the code is sort of being executed this is the uh, you know transmission loss for a, uh, ignore the peaks they are sort of a little abnormal in the sense that you do not really have that much attenuation flow will always dampen the things and anyways we are interested not exactly in the amount of attenuation produced at the peaks. So, you know but one thing is there that for such, such a chamber your this thing you know this will be holding good uh, at least for about 1000 hertz or so uh, I am giving a rough idea of the cut on frequency you can anyways estimate it using the K naught R naught is equal to 1.84 or in this case it is because it is axisymmetric is probably K naught R naught is equal to 3.83. So, you can find out giving the by taking the value of R naught corresponding to 150 by 2 75 mm and 343 sound speed you can get a decent idea of the cut on frequency the first mode beyond which things will deteriorate. So, until that uh, thing happens you know what we can sort of do is that we can keep analyze we can consider the performance transmission loss prediction using this one dimensional plane wave theory seriously only until about 800 to 1000 hertz beyond which deviations are bound to occur that would not be that much accurate. Now, we have done this and porosity value was set as 15 percent. Now, what we could do is that um, you know we have not really uh, considered uh, mean flow in this thing let us consider a small amount of mean flow. So, you know the transmission loss expression will not change because 1 plus m i plus 1 plus m o value that will be same because the, the, the diameter of the plugs are the same uh, or the perforated pipe are same. So, let us consider a small amount of mean flow. So, there will be grazing bias flow also um, using uh, this expression. So, I will do hold on hold on and uh, I need to change the color in the code and put r r stands for red peaks have started to come down trusts have raised the same phenomena happening over and over again. So, we will you know sort of give a little higher value let us say we give 0.2 and uh, plot this guy in uh, perhaps blue color. Now, interesting thing that has happened that the troughs have raised there is no uh, you know the peaks are no longer that sharp they are kind of much shorter and fatter they spread out, but the troughs have raised. So, mean flow definitely has a leveling effect we can clearly see that and um, basically you still get decent amount of attenuation even in the very low frequency as much as 35 dB 40 dB flow really guides. So, there is no flow separation noise that would have otherwise occurred you know and these kind of things are there. So, it is all good. So, you know and this is incidentally the same uh, kind of a behavior that we see uh, published in the literature uh, when we have a uh, you know plug muffler analyzed you know these kind of domes and troughs and then their peaks they based on the uh, length of the resonator that will also be sort of formed. So, we stint with what we sort of expected ok. Now, there is one thing that I wanted to sort of tell here a general comment about the uh, analyzing the perforated uh, sections. So, basically uh, what I am trying to say is that uh, you have your EXPM command that you are using in MATLAB uh, like 15 20 years back when uh, computational power or such functions were not that readily available you know you still have to solve this x dash is equal to AX matrix. So, it eventually to find out EXPM exponential of a matrix you need to find out the Eigen values Eigen vectors. So, xi into diagonal matrix of the Eigen values into xi transpose where xi is the Eigen vector matrix. So, we need to write, th write those routines or use some linear algebra package in Fortran or stuff like that. So, those are the standard techniques that you use and MATLAB has quite good inbuilt solvers. But the fact of the matter is that it, we still have the problems when you use EXPM command for certain parameters you know you get these uh, sort of a 
way we can let me go to the presentation you know here and you know talk about what i mean is that you know typically you get this kind of a value then you know something like this now for certain parameters this starts to do this 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 and you know then it kind of stabilizes and all that and suddenly you see for some parameters it is is doing completely garbage it is giving and it's it's it, this is probably not the thing but what i'm saying is that you get a rapid oscillation something like this you know this massive instability numerical uh, ne negative transmission loss and all that so you know these are really your numerical artifacts the exp m command also is not able to probably you know kind out for the length considered because you know eventually you are doing exp m minus a into l so basically for a much larger length you know you have problems so there is one there is a decent enough scope of some additional investigations to be carried out in future in this thing so what probably could be done is that you could instead of directly using expm command there are things like boundary condition transfer algorithm uh, published in the paper by Trinath Kar and Munjal in JASA Acoustic Society of America several years back so there are techniques where you could do that sort of a thing or possibly consider a better alternative to using expm m command by using some numerical uh, sort of techniques these are eventually you know at the end of the day these are all constant coefficient uh, uh, ordinary differential equations coupled one of course so um, you know you you might actually consider you know using some sort of a one dimensional finite element scheme or maybe one dimensional finite uh, difference schemes with uh, good uh, frequency resolution wavelength resolution uh, capacity so uh, those kind of things can be done or some some special uh, novel techniques can be done so this the reason that i'm telling you this is because you know all mufflers all commercial mufflers let us go to google what we need to do is that just have a look at some of the commercially available muffler interior commercial um, muffler interiors and you'll see invariably the presence of um, perforated pipes in all the mufflers so well these are some of the perforated things but let's say muffler cross section these are simple google images that one i'm trying to show you just right now so these are some of the schematics but what i really wanted to point out is that maybe some nice cool photographs you can have a look and sort of appreciate for yourself um uh, uh what is it like so well you know let's say this one this is like a old and worn out muffler but you know this, this is a youtube video it seems and um, and uh, so the point is that there are so many of them well all of them have um, perforated thing let us have a look at this thing perhaps so so these are you know on a different kind of a perforated holes basically in a central pipe through which the waves are allowed to interact with the annular cavity which is filled with an absorbent material so this is something we have not really seen so far maybe this is a nice cool photograph in Pinterest um you know the mum is in here and interacts with the annular cavity there are two interacting ducts that you sort of see here then there are, you know this is yet another one so in the cavity there's a u tube bend there's a u bend here things like this and then there are so many heaps of them all of them have perforated pipes so what what exactly am i trying to say here you know invariably they all always have uh, you know perforated uh, muffler perforated elements like you can as you are seeing here and you know in these this is a nice photograph you know from some some commercial company so this is the one that uh, uh, three pass muffler configuration flush tube what we would be analyzing just to give you a glimpse of how it works and also have a look at some of the photographs they are unequal perforated patterns you can do a lot of things lot of parametric studies and completely thoroughly analyze it and these are end chambers which kind of facilitate flow reversal and wave propagate typically along the major axis not along the axial length uh, for such short uh, upcoming book that is uh, almost published now and um, so the point i'm trying to make well you can keep uh, looking at these photos on the internet at your leisure uh, the point i'm trying to make is that there are so many muffler components so many uh, configurations which have um, uh, it becomes quite important for us to analyze or pay great attention to the accuracy of our transmission loss predictions for uh, commercial mufflers given their uh, you know popularity so uh, either we need to develop codes which can you know resolve this instable numerical uh, artifacts or numerical instability issues that typically happen as we are seeing if we just change 
the parameters beyond a certain range, uh, you know, using some numerical scheme like, you know, finite elements or perhaps a finite difference as I was mentioning about, uh, you know, and uh, maybe kind of uh, instead of just using the EXPM command in a very brute force kind of an approach, one could do a lot of other things as well, you know, maybe uh, divide the sections and then maybe do some kind of a cascading and, you know, properly analyzing the round of errors that are happening. So, this is a sufficient uh, room for, you know, computational accuracy of such systems. So, one really needs to think about uh, analyze, analysis of such a system. Now, uh, we probably would like to go to three pass perforated duct mufflers. So, these are some of the photographs that you had seen just here. So, this is the three duct uh, perforated muffler, which is flush tube. So, let us uh, let's first also have a look at some of the nice papers that have been published uh, in this thing. This is a very practical uh, commercial muffler. Let me draw uh, such a configuration for you. You know, draw this three interacting ducts thing. So, here we are and there are three ducts. So, these are all perforated. know something like this so uh, what what really happens is this is called a pass tube you know so this region this can be elliptical in cross section or um, possibly circular in cross section doesn't really matter uh, as far as plane wave analysis is concerned and then you know you have your this kind of a thing. So, I will rub this guy and draw this thing here again. So, the waves really flow really comes here um, and you know the waves are it is kind of going the flow is allowed to it is forced to take multiple things. So, this is called a double reversal the first reversal second reversal and this is called a three pass thing. So, this can be perforated throughout its length or you know it can be partially perforated forming cavities here and here resonator cavities much like your extended ECTR element and here this length is pretty typically quite short L 1 L 1 this is much uh, much more shorter than the cross dimension let us call it D 1 assuming this to be elliptical in section. So, L by D 1 is typically about approximately 0.2 for commercial mufflers. So, because the space is really limited most of the space is occupied by uh, this entire thing. Okay. Uh, so, waves typically go along the major axis rather than going like this. Okay. So, they do not travel like this, they travel in this manner, but this is you know this is really the least of our concern now. Right now our concern is basically to uh, figure out this three duct or actually four duct system and eventually you would end up with a matrix which resembles something like this. So, this is going to be your pretty um, heavy duty matrix. <laughs> so, if you re if you number if you choose to number this as duct 1, 2, 3 and fourth is the annular uh, thing. So, P 1 rho naught C naught U 1. So, this is your D D Z, Z being the length measured in this direction. And uh, P 4 rho naught C naught u 4 and uh, this is your this thing. Okay. P 4 rho naught C naught u 4 and this kind of a thing. So, you know you really have 8 cross 8 matrix. So, uh, and then uh, you know this we are gradually moving towards what is called a network analysis. So, that will be the part of the next uh, week's week 10's content, but before you know let me just tell you something that such systems you know become algebraically very tedious. So, instead of you know we definitely do have boundary conditions somewhere you know across uh, this section and across this section. Eventually, what we would want to do is that you know get a transfer matrix relation between the points just here this one, this guy, this guy and relating you know kind of uh, sort of you know uh, all the pressures 
uh, and velocity is here with those possibly at this point, this point and this point, isn't it? And um, assuming that this, these ends are rigid and you have some sort of a resonator cavity formed in here. And uh, then once you from here to here is a simple tubular element transfer matrix, same thing from here to here. And eventually we would, we would also want a transfer matrix that is relating things somewhere here and here and the one that is related here and here. And these tubes are flush, uh, flush with this end chamber, they need not be, the length can be actually more also depending if the space is available, typically it is not. If the more space is available, you can have things like this here or you know you can typically have a whole cavity here. So then you will have multiple, multiply connected muffler. Right now, you know, let us analyze this thing a little more uh, carefully and you know what we typically do that the waves are allowed, when the waves are allowed to interact with the annular duct through these holes, but they are also allowed to go through this thing. So, uh, the flow however can take only one route, you know it has to bend through these things, uh, typically it bends, one must still do a CFD analysis. But what I am trying to say is that even in this, there is an element of multiple connections, you know, they, you, you definitely have uh, multiple connections. Suppose you know this this guy wasn't there suppose this past tube wasn't there okay you would just have this kind of a thing then definitely the waves this is a this is for sure cannot be analyzed using a simple transfer matrix cascading approach as the one that we are going to talk about now but uh, you know this is a multiple connection thing you know if the past tube weren't there but suppose this past tube is here you know then definitely this is a non multiply connected muffler but with certain amount of interactions are happening parallelly uh, between the waves that are here and this cavity and the waves that go here. Eventually, the since transfer matrix cascading can be used here, the point I am going to make is that at the end of the day it is going to be pretty tedious. First, the first things first, we need to analyze or relate basically pressures P1, P2, P3, rho naught, C naught, U1, rho naught, C naught, U2, rho naught, C naught, U3 here the ones at this section at z is equal to l including incorporating the boundary conditions that is here and here resonator conditions get the transfer matrix between this point all the way until this point and similarly the transfer matrix between uh, this point and this point so we have transfer matrix between this point and this point this point and this point and the entire transfer matrix between relating 1 2 3 at z is equal to 0 with variables at z is equal to l uh, and then this is a simple tubular element and uh, the transfer matrix between this and this really really incorporates all that is happening inside this cavity and this cavity. So all that simple algebra, but it can still be you can do some sort of a uh, cascading approach and get the transfer matrix between this point and this point and go about uh, you know finding out the transmission loss of such a muffler system. So I like to go to a paper, this was your analysis of an extended tube 3 pass perforated element muffler the means of transfer matrices. So you know the configuration that was analyzed was pretty much what I am talking about except that the thickness effects of the end plate I mean the plates that demarcate or separate the perforated region between the end chambers have uh, the thickness of such a plate has been considered while computing the transfer matrices. So now what is happening really is that you know this is a multiple interaction duct. So, I am just going to rely on this paper and a subsequent journal article was also published, but this is making use of the generalized decoupling approach. Well, at that time it was a generalized decoupling approach, but what I am saying is that this, this entire thing once we get it in this form, for us it is a matter of using this command and relate upstream and downstream variables. Maybe like I was just hinting at developing clever numerical or computational strategies to uh, analyze such things within the context of a plane wave analysis also. So uh, plane wave is not all that bad. Once we get S1, S2, S3 and S1, S2, S3 at 0 and LP where S1 is your you know pressure and volume velocity or rho naught, C naught, U naught, not you know velocity. So once we get such a representation you know between 0 and L and then we have our transfer matrices. So if you have a look at this thing you, you need to have a transfer matrix between this point and this point and this point and this point. So that is, so I am just trying to walk you through the derivation here. So I may not go through each of them in a great detail, but just skim doing the derivation. The state variables at ZP in duct 1 may be related to those in duct 2 to right end cavity that is in figure 3. Right end cavity means what? This one. 
so between this point and this point incorporating the tubular elements and there are some end corrections also in the length of the pipe which is okay so you get this relation and then you get relation between the left end cavity like this with certain end correction lengths all those things are there and finally s10 is related to s3 lp you know eventually what we want let me go back to this figure we want relation the relation between pressure and velocity just you know somewhere here to those somewhere here and then it is a tubular element so doesn't really matter what happens no matter the length whatever the length is so that's what the author has done by by you know cleverly uh, doing some clever algebraic manipulations he has found out that s10 is related to s3 lp using a c matrix c matrix is a big d a w and all these matrix are there where your um, this matrix is your sub matrix is really so it's written in a certain fashion so i'll probably write i mean i'll show some matlab coding um, results and w is your this matrix c is this matrix so i'm sort of not going into the algebra because of want of time but there are some parametric studies the result of which i would sort of show so i'm assuming mark number 0 only he has considered point 1 and there are some nice cool results that the author has published here and then you have a longer chamber with tube protruding inside and then a transmission loss which the good thing about such configuration such perforated thing is that you know the reason why do we use such a muffler because in automotive mufflers we don't have really much of a space and the flow within the constraints of a limited space and with the understanding that you can tolerate a much higher level of back pressure you are trying to bend the pipes multiply so that the flow allowing the flow to go through number of perforated holes and turning a num taking a number of turns so incurring losses um so back pressure will be more but it is not but that not that much because you have number of interacting ducts but at the same time because waves are allowed to take a larger path through perforated sections and you know resonator cavities and all that uh, you would expect to have a number of uh, peaks and sort of um, domes or things like that eventually with the understanding that you hope to get some sort of a broadband at least some 10 db 15 db constant attenuation at beginning from very low frequency so uh, you know that's what plane wave analysis parametric studies promises you just vary the parameter and figure out one of them which gives you a good estimation and so this is one of the curves that we get broadband transmission loss and so these kind of things you know uh, happen here um so we do get uh, you know such a such a such a transmission loss configuration so now the thing is that uh, let's let's do some matlab <coughs> uh, coding uh, for certain parameters like la lp lp is a perforated length L A and L B are the length of the 70 mm or 100 mm are the length of the left and right cavity. This is some um, connecting length about just about 5.5 mm or something like that. Thickness of the pipe, porosity is about only about 5 percent. Radius of the duct is something like this. Thickness of the pipe and the hole diameter. So those are some values. And this, like ever since this paper, and you know, this is probably another such configuration, uh, such three pass. muffler configuration with circular cross section exactly the one that i am talking about analyzed in comsol multiphysics and they did some finite element modeling full 3d modeling and uh, figured out some transmission loss curves and all that published in uh, in 2018 really so yeah so all good and then you have yet another paper uh, with perforated bulk heads published in here So there are number of such sort of advancements that has really happened. So what we'll do is that we'll quickly jump on to a MATLAB code, and uh, and the the perfor. Let me also open the common perforated. You know, carefully have a look at these are all standard parameters. By now, you should be familiar. Alpha is some value what I used in the last code. So, you know, net net effective annular area, and this is the perforated impedance. uh some value to give the perforated impedance now this is an 8 cross 8 matrix okay exactly what i was talking about momentum equation continuity in the duct 1 in the duct 2 duct 3 and finally you have duct 4 where you have such a thing all these effects are there mean flow has been not been considered and finally you get exp m times thing and get it in the pv form and possibly with some rearrangement i guess or probably not and then uh applying the impedance conditions at the left and right or the thing and then relating and then sort of reducing it to the 6 cross 6 thing and 
Finally, what you get is a six, six cross six uh, matrix. So this code computes a transfer matrix in the state variable forms up from upstream of the downstream to the common perforated section after applying rigid wall boundary conditions for the annular shell. So here, note note that we are not applying the uh, you know if you go back to the presentation and so here when I talk about boundary conditions, I really mean applying the boundary conditions here and here. I mean pertaining to the rigid end here. So at this is at this section, this is at this section. Okay, so that is what I do. So MATLAB coding can be fun, provide that you know how to do it and keep manipulating things. And then once we get that the overall transfer matrix is exactly what following Munjal's approach in this paper. So you can follow other, you can, so this particular configuration allows you some sort of a cascading or simple multiplication of transfer matrices, network analysis, when you have multiple wave propagation paths, we'll study about that in the next week like I said by introducing some simple elements to begin with. But for now what I am, what I suggest is let me just run the code, it is going to take some time, let me sort of increase the value, let us say 5 hertz because uh, this is going to take some time and maybe do only up to 1000 uh, hertz or maybe 1500 hertz. So what, let, let me also bring out the porosity value, 4.5 percent is the porosity really. Thickness is 8 mm, diameter of the hole is about 2, 3 mm, or something like that. Thickness is 127 mm, and uh, LA cavity, LB cavity is about 150 mm and 102 mm. That is the, basically the end, end chambers that is at the left and the right given by these lengths. And this is the length of the common perforated section, I guess so. Uh, no, so this is the length of the common perforated section, my mistake. And LA and LB, I have to see what it is. Uh, diameters of the duct, diameter of the shell. So, I am doing choice too. So, it might be because of some something, some changes in the code I would have done. It has been some time now that I have used this code. But um, let me use, let me get some nice curves. So, beginning from 5 hertz up unto 1500 hertz. Let us see what we get. So, this is going to take about 300 runs or 301 runs. So, we should be getting something like uh, you know this kind of a curve that we sort of got here, you know this kind of broadband. We are setting of course mean flow is not considered really in and we are just considering the perforated impedance by the classical one not using the LNADI's one. One thing is there you know while the code is executing one piece of advice is that you know whenever you write codes again comment it and you know kind of securely you know you know save it at different uh, location and you, you never know when you will use certain things. So like this you can actually I would encourage you guys to actually do the ones who are interested to build your own uh, library of uh, you know muffler elements that is what all muffler consultants you know they do. So while we were talking a transmission loss curve a beautiful nice TL curve has popped out and um, you know you see exactly the same stuff so we are able to sort of reproduce. Uh, what the author has done in this paper. Of course, this is with mean flow, uh, effect of distance. So, this is with mean flow. We have not really considered mean flow, but we know for sure what is going to happen when mean flow is there. This peak will come down and this trough might be raised a bit, especially this one and this would be further. There will be leveling effect we know, by now we should be knowing, but what is to be seen we are still getting about you know roughly we would easily get about. 8 to 10 dB, 8 dB transmission loss up to about 1000 hertz because especially when flow is there because this will raise the trough, no doubt about it. You know these kind of things um, will happen. So uh, this configuration uh, you know presents nice uh, insight into the actually uh, used commercial uh, mufflers and with this thing what we will do, we will stop for the day and I will see you in the next week but on a parting note what I would allude to is that. Um, uh, in the next week we are going to talk about the impedance matrix concept for the first time. How do we, all this while we are characterizing things in terms of pressure and velocity at one port to the ones at the downstream port. It was really at the end of the day you would have got a even something like 2n cross 2n matrix or you know to for a simple case 2 cross 2 matrix. But you know you can have ports with 3 ports, single inlet double outlet muffler. So how do you relate that, how do you characterize uh, such a system? So by characterization I mean relating uh, some state variables to the other state variables using some sort of a matrix representation. So there should be some relation between them. For a general n port system, n need not be an even number, n can be odd number, 3 port, single inlet, double outlet, you know, a double inlet, triple outlet, you know. Uh, 
things like that. So, you need to work in impedance matrix which is more general and is used a lot in electrical theory. So, there is a like we have been talking about electroacoustic analogy. So, here also again impedance matrix. So, uh, we will worry about we will talk about impedance matrix characterization in the next week uh, and how to analyze uh, you know fairly complicated and you know uh, pretty formidable looking system uh, by means of a network analysis where each of the mufflers you know at least the two ports one can be characterized using the transfer matrices, but need not be you can use an impedance matrix depending upon what you want to do. And then you apply junction laws and characterize such a thing and possibly you know use such an impedance I am sorry network representation talk about different uh, elements which involve multiple uh, acoustic wave propagation paths for example, a Herschel Quincke tube before moving to this multiply connected perforated thing element. So, we will analyze such a thing and if time permitting we will also have a look at some of the recently published ideas like integrated transfer matrix which can be used to analyze very complicated commercial mufflers all within the realm of plane wave we can analyze such uh, complicated multiply connected mufflers and time permitting we probably would also be going to a CCTR configuration. Remember the things that we probably discussed uh, I think in week 5 if I can see my notes is we probably discussed that in uh, uh, no well. Uh, I guess in week 6, I am sorry, my apologies. So, we did only conical mufflers, but we can probably uh, have a central pipe with a perforated thing and with extensions, but the outer or the annular thing is no longer uniform in shape, it is conical in shape. So, we have a CCTR conical consecutive mufflers, which can also be uh, analyzed using a matrix and approach. So, let us see how we go about doing that time permitting. So, this is all going to be the focus of the week 10. and. Uh, uh, till that time I would strongly encourage you to start writing your own codes and developing your own libraries uh, for the plane wave thing. It will be a very useful exercise for you guys uh, if you want to really link, learn things from the you know from the coding point of view at least from a designer's point of view. Okay. Uh, so, this is one aspect that you should have good analytical and computational uh, skills and uh, before and then there are of course, people who do experiments. So, they are good at that. So, uh, till that time I would uh, stop here and uh, you know I would see you in uh, week 10 with the contents I described below. Thanks.